Well, um, this is all going to be on the quiz, by the way. <laughs> oh, Everybody, get oh, your man, number two a, pencils out. There's Ty a Connor test. Over. Hello and welcome to another episode of Poppy Craftsman. I'm Jeff. I'm Nate. I'm Chris. We're here with Rob and Paul from the Arizona Craft Brewers Guild. Guys, tell us a little something about yourselves. Um, well, I'm Rob. I'm the executive director and uh, I've been doing this for going on four years. Uh, we represent close to 100 different breweries in Arizona. Nice. And my name is Paul. I'm the communications manager for the Guild. And I've been in the Guild for only about four months now. So still relatively new to it and learning a lot. Rob is a genius and has so much information. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed every day, but I love it. So you're that's still awesome. the uh, FNG then is what around yes. the office. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's right. It'll be a long time before there's another FNG for you to haze. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Rob, you're no stranger to the show. Um, so for the people that didn't hear your little blurb for when we did Real Wild and Woody, um, give us a little background on what the Arizona Craft Brewers Guild is, what it does and why you're important to the Arizona craft beer scene. Well, I don't think I'm that important. I think the organization um, speaks for itself. I mean, it's been around going on, it will be 20 years next year. Um, and it's uh, represented, um, it, it promotes and protects Arizona breweries. The promotion part you see through our festivals, Real Wild Woody, Strong Beer Festival, Baja Beer Fest, uh, our Brewers Conference, those are how, how um, most of the beer fans would know us. Um, what they don't know is um, we, we meet with the Arizona Liquor Department monthly to, you know, talk about rules and regulations. Um, we do lobbying. We've um, been part of the omnibus bill process for the last three years as a result of our um, sort of presence at SB 1030 that allowed breweries to grow and not be restricted by laws as they do in California, Colorado, Oregon. We thought it was time that we uh, were up to speed with them because we compete with their products here in our own state. Another another thing that uh, um, even some of my, you know, even some of the biggest fans of craft beer, uh, what they fail to realize and what they've enjoyed for, for a couple of years now is this collaboration phenomenon that's going on. Previous to the law change, uh, if a brewery wanted to collaborate with another brewery and they didn't have that liquor license or that restaurant license they had to brew at two separate locations um, mm -hmm. and that could be problematic when you're doing a big project like um, the Heroes 19 beer for, for the Yarnell 19 right it was brewed at Prescott Brewing Company and and there were you know 20 or 30 breweries that wanted to put that beer on that contributed um, grain hops labor um, that worked towards promoting it on their social media and they couldn't legally serve it in their own breweries. So, you know, that was something that we fixed. Um, and now we have also seen some new breweries opening up um, that can open up six months earlier than their brew house or their ability to catch up with the production can happen. So they can serve other Arizona beers and, and get open and get some money in their pockets and it gives them a much better chance of surviving that first year. Absolutely, absolutely. So we probably should start with the, uh, you know, the craft the most craft beer question of all craft yeah, beer our podcast, standard. Which, Paul, we'll start with you, actually. What craft beer actually got you into craft beer? Like, what was the one that was like, that's the one, that's when I changed my mind completely, <laughs> I'm never going back? Uh, it was a long time ago, probably about <clears throat> eight years ago. Um, I believe it was, let's see, it was Odell. Um, nice. I, was, I, was, I was working retail at Whole Foods Market at the time. I uh, just become the beer specialist there, still learning a lot about beer, very novice at that point, and trying out, you know, whatever we had available and had Odell Mercenary, double IPA. Nice. And that, that really struck my heart and really that got me good beer. loving IPAs and wanting to delve more into every other style and learning everything I could about beer in general. Very nice. Okay. Rob? Um, well, I've got a longer story. No, right. Sorry. Hey, that's, that's all right. We, we got time, Rob. I, I, grew up, time. I grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, Not so, much beer there. You know, I, I've, I've been able to see what a larger brewery can sort of do for a city. And, and they did for many, many years. And the, and the time of the big brewery in Milwaukee's clearly passed. Miller still is there. But there was Blatt's and Paps and Schlitz. And so that's, that's kind of what I grew up on. And, um, you know, at the time, the first sort of microbrewery 
was Capital Brewing in Wisconsin, or uh, Madison, um, Sprecher. Um, it was people who used to work at Pabst and, you know, saw what was going on with, with uh, Sierra Nevada and kind of opened those places up. The difference, and I think this is maybe difficult for people to understand who, who aren't as old as me, I guess, uh, that, that didn't grow, because we have social media now. And, right. yeah. and, and, and um, so different. if one person knows about it, they can literally, you know, tell thousands of people what they did and, and what's new. Um, yeah. We had to wait for like, you know, the weekly whatever, <laughs> you know, paper yeah, um, or word of mouth. Right. So anyway, uh, it, it was probably Sprecher or Spre Sprecher makes a black Bavarian, um, okay. just a delicious beer. New Belgium, or not, New, um, New Glarus hadn't even, I mean, that, that didn't even open yet. But um, again, that was a Pabst employee that opened that. But there were a lot of these small places and, and the first craft brewery um, that I remember that sort of gave me the epiphany was a place called um, uh, Century Hall. Again, we didn't really make a distinction between small breweries or, or microbreweries. There was no craft room movement because there just wasn't the, the messaging behind it. Yeah. Um, anyway, it was, it was it was that brewery, um, and we used to go there because if you played skee ball and you won enough tickets, you get some free pictures. And of course, we knew how to pull the tickets out slowly. <laughs> uh, anyway, when I moved out here, uh, I got to know um, Rio Salada Brewing, where currently Huss is. Um, but that's the same location. Right. So it was the Cideman Brewery, then it was um, the Huss Brewery, um, or excuse me. Um, um, Real Salado, and then it became Huss. But when it was Real Salado, they had a, a Schwarz beer, which was Black Bavarian. So I'm like, oh, cool, they have this going on. And it was all word of mouth, right? Yeah. But I still didn't understand. There was no craft or, or no yeah. microbrewery association. Um, just happened to go to Durango, Colorado, you know, in the summer. I uh, did some mountain biking up there. Um, and uh, there's a brewery called Carver, Carver Brewing in Durango. And I walked in there. And I actually went to because it was called it was the bakery, Carver Bakery and Brewery. Oh, nice! So I went there to get some coffee and a muffin or whatever, and I saw a sign that says brewery in the back, and went down this hallway to this other space, and you could see the glass, you could see the stainless equipment, and, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And I look on the wall, and there's a newspaper article from um, the Milwaukee Journal about the Century Hall fire. So the, remember, I was talking about Century Hall where we got the ski ball tickets. Well, it burned to the ground because the paint store next there just burned it to to, to the ground. So I'm like, why do they have a picture of this Milwaukee fire, which isn't, you know, by consciousness, like what's yeah. going on here? So, you know, naturally a guy from the brewery with a beard came out and said, yeah. can, I, can I answer any questions? I said, what is the story here? Yeah. Apparently, um, the guys at Open Carver grew up in Sherwood, Wisconsin, a suburb, also used to go to um, uh, Century Hall. Gotcha. Found out that the brewery burned to the ground, drove up there sight unseen, and tried to see what was left of the brewery and bought the equipment. And that's when I realized the equipment is really, oh, really important. Oh yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, this is a thing. This isn't just um, things going on in Milwaukee and we, yeah. I mean if if, be big. if if that equipment is so important, then um, this is like a thing that I need to figure out. This is something that I just can't be passively um, because of a you know, it just showed me how delicate the industry was and, yeah. and how important the equipment was. And, and, and you know, it. I, I used to have a saying, um, you know, some beer geeks follow breweries, brewers, like, you know, when they move around, like real beer geeks follow the equipment. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. They know the history of the equipment. Absolutely. It's like grateful, absolutely. grateful dead of the, uh, <laughs> the, the brewers. There you go. On the tour. Yeah. That's absolutely true. I mean, there's different breweries. And I was just in Maine, and uh, we were talking about who took over Bissell Brothers uh, equipment when they moved up to a much larger uh, system. And they're pretty big up in Portland. And that's just, it is, it's super interesting to figure out who takes over what and what they do with it. It's funny. I mean, you know, do you believe in, do you, are you superstitious? Are you religious or whatever? Like, but some people think that the equipment has some sort of magic to it, even though it can be scrubbed clean and all that yeah, other stuff. It's um, done something good. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a story behind it. Absolutely. That's good. So, so we don't want to pin you down because of Arizona, but what are some of the beers you like that are not from here, I guess, which might be... <laughs> I, I, we don't want to put you in a situation where we have to like, pick one of your favorite children yeah. from Arizona. No, 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 no. no. We're to put you in a box. But not from Arizona, if there's beers that you're, you know... Sure. Why don't you ask Paul that question? Paul. Yeah, Paul. <laughs> uh, yeah. What's your favorite out-of-market beer? Um, I'd say there's a couple stars in California, like Bottle Logic is quite an amazing brewery. Yeah. Uh, the brewery is another favorite of one of mine. Yeah. Um, 
some old standbys like Deschutes out of Oregon, obviously. Uh, got yeah. some really solid beers all around. Uh, yeah, some some solid ones out there. I'd say Bottle Logic is probably one of my favorites from from out of state, though. Yeah. From what they do. Oh, so Paul's, Paul's fired. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that was a test, Paul. We're sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry. sorry I, agree, earlier. I agree, Paul. <laughs> so I, I'm at, I, one of the other bre- formative bre- brews in my um, upbringing, I guess, was, was Guinness, actually, because, again, not a lot of information out there, but um, I, I did a little research out it wasn't very alcoholic but everyone thought it was again remember there was no internet there was no way to look this stuff up low calorie and, and it, it just enjoyed the flavor of it and yeah. um uh it i'm actually going to be in dublin next week and oh, nice. i'm going to have a few of those um but there is a there is a new scene i mean every, i think everybody who says oh if you go to dublin and you don't want to get us go to porterhouse that was there the last time i was there but i guess there's like a, a whole host of new places i want to check out um, so I will check those out. But my answer to you is I travel a lot. Um, my, my job um, and, uh, you know, allows me to, to meet with the people who do my job uh, quarterly. And so, um, of course, uh, I'm going to follow their lead. But oh, yeah. my, my rule of thumb when I travel or if I even go to someone's house, if they offer me a beer, I'm just not I'm not going to say no. I don't, yeah. No matter what it is. I'm going to, you know, it, oh, yeah. I mean, I'll ask what. Well, my choices are. But, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> what else do you have? You know, but uh, so so that's my general rule of thumb. Um, Pretty open to whatever you, whatever's around. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale is a, is a, is a standard for me. Um, it is the by which I, and I'm a Pale Ale fan. Right. Um, I do enjoy these really flavorful beers. I enjoy the geeky beers. I used to homebrew. Um, someday I hope to. Uh, continue to homebrew. Right. Maybe I'll put a Pico brew in here or something here in the <laughs> office. But, That'd be awesome. Nice. Um, I have a I have a twenty gallon system that I haven't used in a while. Nice. Um, uh, but uh, um, uh, you know I'm 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 pretty much open to a lot of things. Um, but the pale ales were were that's my beer because I'm not always just focused on the beer. I'm I'm focused on the conversation. Yeah. And um, that's a good one to, that sort of sort of can be in the background or it can be in the foreground. Right. Absolutely. So, you mean, do you see, do you see, I mean, I've heard a lot of talk about it and, and maybe saw some of it too, but I, I see uh, session beers kind of coming back. I think people mm, absolutely. You know, more want table beer, session beer, something that's going to be, because people like to drink beer. They like the way it tastes. So they actually want to drink more of it. So, I mean, I don't know if you guys, I mean, Paul, maybe you can speak to this more since it's your background. Uh, I mean, I know a lot about the style, but it's not typically what I go for when okay. I, it's typically, you know, his first favorite beer was a big double IPA, Chris. <laughs> so no, no, he likes but, double snubs. But that, I mean, but, I'm saying in the background as far as where it works. But my philosophy is, whenever I go to a bar, house, mm. store, whatever, see something new, I definitely want to try it. I don't want to have, you know, any kind of stance against anything. So even if it's a style I don't like, I'm still going to yeah. try it out anyways. Right. Absolutely. Um, but sessions just not really uh, big on on my side. Okay, know? so. This, I mean, we, we, we travel a little bit. Um, we're, we're both going to GABF, so it'll be our first nice. together. That'll be fun. Out of state thing. And, That'll and be badass. My, my philosophy is when you're someone else's guest, never turn down free alcohol or free fat, whatever that fat entails. If it's, <laughs> if it's you know, some exotic food. Yep, some it, good food. If it's, if it's something you normally don't eat, um, you know, Give wherever you are, um, you know. There's comfort in alcohol and fat. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, I would say... That, that needs to be on a shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, we, uh, you know, the, it's really exciting. Arizona craft beer, beer right now is exciting. It's growing, I think, all the time. It's growing at, a, at, a, at an awesome rate as far as, you know, the amount of breweries we see open, you know, at, at different times. As far as comparing it to something like, you know, what we see in San Diego, what do you think, what do you think is important about our growth? What do you think, what do you think drives you know the the growth here in arizona or at least you know what the people like to drink i mean i guess that's kind of a hard question but you know from where you're sitting you see trends oh yeah i think it's an easy question actually perfect <laughs> good um because it felt bad All right, no good. no no um <laughs> so just take your question and, and think outside the box a little bit and, right and, and ask it a different way um okay. do we have do we have the hot dog culture that chicago has or, or new york city does no we have a different one in tucson by the way we don't yeah. have it as much here we have right. the sonoran dog right so i think we just have to be who we are. Oh, yeah. So we have, think about what you love about Arizona, and the beer has to match it. And I think um, 
the things that we're doing approach that for yeah. sure. We cannot ever be Portland. We cannot, we don't have enough um, enjoyable, walkable yeah. uh, 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 places yet. I mean, maybe someday, yeah. not maybe in our lifetime, right. but, but we're infilling and we're connecting neighborhoods. Um, you know, just here in Tempe, uh, you know, there's a number of, of breweries that didn't exist five years ago. Um, and, and from this location, um, through light rail and, and bike, you can get there without driving a car. I mean, I'm not talk even talking about Uber. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. You can get to a lot of places, craft beer centric places that, that, that celebrate Arizona beer or breweries, um, you know, 20, 25 places easily, easily. Yeah. And, and so that's a new thing for Phoenix. And it makes sense. Yeah. Um, well, follow up to that then. I mean, what what is Arizona doing well? What are we doing well here as far as you know, to, to achieve that growth? Um, I think we were sort of dimensional in that um, uh, initially. Think about this. Um, the biggest breweries, and, and you know, I'm not talking about the ABI merger or anything. The biggest breweries in Arizona for a long time were Four Peaks and Santan. And then the rest of the big breweries in Arizona we're not actually in Phoenix. Think about that. 80% of the beer sold in, in Arizona is in the Phoenix market, and just two of the top 10 breweries were in Phoenix in terms of production, right? Right. Um, because those other ones were Mud Shark, um, Lumberyard, Grand Canyon, um, Barrio. Um, th those were the, I don't want to miss anyone in case someone's listening, so I <laughs> just sort of look at the map or whatever, but, but that, that was it. Um, and now Dragoon is sort of, sort of a volume guy. Um, there's, there's some other ones feeling, but but it was all the surrounding area. So, you know, a lot of times people think it's it's all about Phoenix, but it's really not. Um, it's about the whole state. Yeah. So um, that's the way it was, but now we're, we've got some smaller places and um, um, and they do an amazing thing. I, like I know a lot of people love Rent House and they love um, the beers they produce. I agree with them, but to me, one of the most exciting things is they, they renovated probably one of the last standing bungalows in that area, and it captures oh, um, yeah. it captures an era that's sort of not gonna come back. That that style of house isn't gonna come back right. um, in that neighborhood ever. They've captured it, and it creates another worldliness to us. Like you're in there, especially if it's cold outside. You could be um, you could be in Seattle. You could be. Yeah. Um, you could be in Baltimore because that style of house was the house style in the, in the fifties and, yeah. and, and so on. So, um, if any, so they've captured that, um, you, you look at some place like Oso, it, it is its own thing. And, and, you know, um, yeah. they've, they've crap captured the, um, the biking community and, um, this indoor outdoor feel, um, McFade's captured indoor outdoor. Feel. I, I think, yeah. you know. Obviously, everyone loves to have this, these really great beers, um, and especially if you're at home and you've bought package or got a growler, um, you're going to focus in on the beer. Um, but I really like that um, the things outside the glass, the things that, that um, um, you know, tell you that the, the owners of those businesses, the people who run those businesses sort of have this big picture, and they're trying to um, speak to, to the hospitality and to the to – the, you know, taking away, taking you away from the cares of the day and, and having a nice beverage and, and meeting people in your own neighborhood that you would never meet except that you went to the neighborhood place. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, no, absolutely. I agree. So uh, the other day, uh, I, we, we follow you guys on, on the, uh, the Instagram, of course, and I saw that you were actually at, uh, was it a Tempe City Hall meeting? Is it? Yeah. Where, yeah. It was about bike stuff, right? So of kind of going back to your, your point about you know, you could walk places with the light rail stuff, and yet what you guys are doing, you're out there helping try to help change some laws or get things made done to help with that, right? Yeah, I, I think um, um, we, we value we, 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 we value all forms of transportation, mm -hmm. um, and I and I, I'm, I might get myself in a little bit of trouble here because I'm going to talk about some things that people have like this initial gut reaction of one thing and, and not another. I will say that Phoenix, in particular, um, has an amazing set of streets. And highways it may not feel like that but we are as large in in square footage as la but no one says we have la traffic yeah. right right we have no. a population of philadelphia but we don't have philadelphia problems we have a great mix uh, of things um and and, and and you know volume transportation by automobile is something we did very well do very well but it's it has reached its peak okay. the more lanes you put in for traffic the more 
they're going to get crowded. It's a never ending battle. And I'm not coming from a place of just gut reaction. You know, I, I you know, I tell people to read, you know, tasting beer from Randy Mosher, you know, if you want to learn how to brew, you know, you, you go to Palmer or you right. go to Papazian. Um, there are books you can read about, about walkability and transportation and all that stuff. Um, and here's, I'm going to get myself in a little trouble probably with some of the people who have businesses where there's parking meters. Um, you know, Flagstaff is putting in parking meters and people are freaked out about it. Um, but you know how hard it is to park in, in, in Flagstaff sometimes with free parking? Here's the thing, the goal, and, and, and they can do it badly with meters and they can do it badly, it can still go badly. Right. But the goal is to have 70 to 80% of the parking spots occupied at any one time. So there's always 20 or 30% spots available. So however you do that, if it's free and it works that way, great. But if you have to get people to move out every once in a while and not park there all day, um, the goal is that. So if the meters get you to the 70, 80, because it's not 70 or 80 in Flagstaff on a, on a Friday, yeah. Saturday, yeah. Yeah. you just you just like, you park, you you, you play the game, and then go around you, some circles. Right, mm -hmm. right. Go around the block three or four times. So, but it's, you know, Flagstaff is Flagstaff. I'm sorry, I'm really talking like, like a wonk here, but Flagstaff is Flagstaff. But if you're in like Chandler and you have this idea that downtown Phoenix, that you're never gonna get a spot, you'll just never go. That's true. I'll never go. And, and so the meters have to be friendly and they're getting friendlier. If you have to like have like $25 a quarters in your car, like you're, yeah. like you're in college and you got to do laundry, yeah. it's not going to work. Nobody carries. But then the, the like new, that. the new parking meters are good. I don't know. But if you saw my Instagram, I, I saw your photo of the one that was like faded. Every one of those. <laughs> things, oh yeah. Can, I did see that. They've gotten away from telling you what the hours of the parking are. So there's things that, you know, like, that's a poke at Phoenix. Yeah. But I see it other places. Right. You have to, oh, yeah. you have to get, if people are talking about, you know, uh, the, the free market, right? The free market is dependent on having, everyone having good information. If you don't have good information, the free market doesn't work. So yeah. parking has yeah. to have that. And that's the stuff that's important to you guys, especially yeah. for, you know, people coming out to these breweries. It's like, they need to see, they need right. to be able to park, need information. Right. So I was at, it was at the city Tempe council because we value as, as businesses, all forms of transportation. Yeah. And we want that happy medium. And when the city plan for Tempe says we're going to have these kinds of bike lanes in place, and again, I don't want to get in trouble with everybody who, you know, drives down McClintock. It literally takes an extra minute a day because of the bike lane. And the more people that use the bike lane, the less people that will use traffic. We want to get there. Um, you know, if we talked about how many people walk on the sidewalk we all want sidewalks for our house right yeah. we don't want to have people walking the road you know you can say well nobody uses the sidewalk well they have to be there for people to use them so that's why i was there just to explain you, they had a general plan if you're going to change it it changes what people think and you've got a you've got a bicycle themed brewery paddle house on on mill avenue so yeah it's obviously important to my members it's obviously important to to have those things in place yeah that's awesome and that's awesome they have you guys there to do that support them like that so i hope everyone is still with us not <laughs> <laughs> well when we talked to wandering tortoise it's important information you know and that's what shay was saying is like you know phoenix has to change its mind on the way parking is right i mean if, oh, you, yeah. if you don't have a spot in front of your building people like are like nope not going you know and there's there's alternatives yeah. and like you're saying i mean if you either carpool or take the light rail or bike or right you know those kind of things there's other means yeah. to get they around here and Hopefully that grows. Yeah, our listeners got to hear me say it last time. If you're held back from going someplace you love because the parking lot's not exactly an ideal situation, you really don't like going there that much. Right. <laughs> really. I mean, you don't. Yeah. yeah. Go to anywhere you love in California, Bottle Logic. It's not a fun place to try and park sometimes. It just happens. just the way it is. But you go and you find a way. You walk a little distance or you Uber, whatever it is, um, public transportation. So, yeah, I agree. So it's good to have you guys do that. Yeah, I mean, it, just like a single parking spot can kill an entire um, location deal. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, so. It's nuts. So kind of going back a little bit, um, you guys said you're going to GABF and... Jealous. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> I, so it's, it's on the bucket list for us to actually go there and do one of these maybe one, one day. Yeah. Uh, but what, what I was going to say is I've heard somebody t say that GABF and, and festivals like that are the reason that... One of the biggest reasons why craft beer in America actually boomed for so long was that you know, it's competition between brewers because if you're, you know, if, if somebody comes to your establishment and is like, this is a good beer, great. 
But when you start making competition between breweries for a little bit, it'll help everybody up their game a little bit more. I mean, does that seem? Um, yeah. Um, so competitions and festivals, um, obviously, they were very, very important. Uh, when I t- when I talked about like there was no transfer of information, right? Um, you, you you can imagine when um, Ken Grossman and Jeff Levish from um, uh, New Belgium and um, Garrett Oliver from from Brooklyn probably met at you know right whatever the GABF precursor was I, I don't know if it was <laughs> called that um, there was a merger between the Brewers Association and the Association of Brewers on the East Coast. Um, you could probably Google that and figure it out better than I do, but but you can imagine when they when they like met for the first time, they weren't like emailing each other because it didn't right. exist. Yeah. Um, um, so yeah, those things were very important, and they still have that value. Um, but there's been an explosion in, in in the number of festivals, and the reasons to have festivals, and so you know, I feel like our festival is true to that meeting of those people together when we do our festivals uh, i know you know brewers from um you know northern arizona if, 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 uh, you know if, if, if black bridge comes down for strong beer um they want to know what's going on in tucson they want to know what's going on here and, and that's their opportunity so i think we hold true to that value um obviously we get if, if it's got the guild mark on it we have the best of the best beer but but i'm not here to hang my hat on that for everybody, we want to provide an experience for everybody. We want everyone to have a good time. We want everyone to be safe. Um, and we want everyone to know, and I don't know how well we've sold this idea, that you know we're looking out for the consumer, we're looking out for our businesses, and um, you know, it, it's not, it isn't going to fight you know, some of these epic um, uh, battles that some of these charitable organizations want to fight, but it's also not, um, some gimmick and some marketing company coming in and we don't know where the money's going or we don't care and we just yeah. want ounces of alcohol per, <laughs> per, per hour per ticket whatever that is we're not that and, and, and you know we're fighting for um, that original experience and the ability uh, you know our guys because they're excited about our festival and they want to talk to other brewery brewers and they want to see I mean some of the breweries from the area areas want to know what's going on in the um in other markets, they want they want to they want to experience that. So our go- our, our the, the people that consumers want to talk to are going to be there um, more so than any other festival. Good segue. How did Real Wild and Woody go? From your perspective, where you were sitting, for us, we have our own perspective as people as people enjoyed it. But yeah. How did it go for you guys? Um, I was largely happy with it. Um, there were some hiccups again. Um, you know, there's some things that. Um, I'll, I'll share a little bit with you, but, um, you know, we're working with the city of Phoenix and they're not used to doing these kinds of events. Yeah. And by contract, I have to use, um, some of their assets and their resources. Um, and some of them are pretty expensive. And so, um, you know, lines were a result of that. Um, yeah. and, um, you know, we have a plan to work through it. We had a plan to work through it this time. Yeah. Um, they had some new people in and didn't get the plan or didn't work with the plan. I've got a limited, it's myself and a couple other people. So, Oh yeah. Um, you know, had I, and in fact, I was the one who recognized that, that people weren't coming in. They were coming in one and two at a time. Like, you know, we got to fix this. Yeah. So, you know, there was that, um, uh, we, we, we expanded the space. I'm always going to want to have that comfortable roominess that I think our festivals have. Oh yeah. Um, in some areas, it's a little tight. It's hard to understand who might have a big line, and um, I literally have people who will helpfully suggest that they bend around the corner a little bit and make sure the aisles are path, uh, the the aisles are clear. So there was that. Um, hey, I, from the from from the year before to when you guys doubled the space. I mean, there was that one section the year or two two years ago yeah. that was completely mobbed. It was nothing. There was no. There was yeah. zero issues like that this yeah. year. I saw. Um, we were there the whole time. I mean, look, definitely the double space seemed to be great. So it, it's a different festival than Strong Beer. I can put as many food trucks as in as I want, but you know, people are paying yeah. for food. I can't. I can't put a food truck in and say, "Hey, these sandwiches are eight dollars or whatever," because yeah. there's a contract with a huge company that runs a contract. So I have to give away food. 
Yeah. So, I, but I mean, to convince a restaurant to give away food and not get any food back. So everything yeah. is, is a, it's a free sample. And so, and it has to be two ounces um, by the contract. I mean, I'd love to say, hey, uh, I'll, I'll put in like 10 food trucks or I'll, I'll whatever, right. and, th- and they'll charge you a fair price and no one will be without food. Um, I can only do these samples and then you're, 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 um, you're, you always have the, the concessions. And I think they've upped their game in, in the last year. Oh, yeah. um, they didn't even want to discuss it with us last year. And this year, like, all right, well, we'll tr-. And I'm like, oh, great, we'll try these foods. And, and I want to get to the point where they have a corporate chef, um, but we didn't really show up on his radar. And he's a good chef. Yeah. Um, but I want him to work with that, that uh, concessionaire. Um, it, it, it's a long process. And they're like, oh, well, yeah. I don't know. We don't know if the, the, you know, the money value is there. I'm like, oh, man. You're like, trust I gotta, me, it's there. Yeah, I got I got to pay six thousand dollars for the pleasure of using their fryer. Yeah, come I mean, on. Um, yeah, get lost. That's what we. Well, that, no, we do that. Yeah, right. But I yeah. mean, I don't know what I don't know what the total buyout of that is. Yeah, no kidding. Like to say, go away. We want to. We want to do. We want to be who we are. Yeah. Um, I can't even imagine. So yeah, it, it's a, it's more of a statement um, piece for us in the city of Phoenix. And um, our goal is to set the stage to get uh, the Craft Brewers Conference here. Mm. Um, they have their own team and they have their own contracts and they have their own um, economic force. That right. I can't, I can't. you know, they can say, hey, 15,000 brewery professionals are gonna be here in addition to X, Y, and Z. Yeah. You know, well, if we get Real Wild Woody to 15,000, we can use the really nice end of the conference. Right. I mean, if we ever get there, we have got room to blow out, but yeah, um, this is who we are, and yeah. we're the first. We're the first organization to have a brewery, a beer centric festival in the convention center in thirty years. Yeah, That's so great. it was awesome. We enjoyed it. Yeah, we have to thank you again for you guys' hospitality and letting us yep. get in there. I mean, it was great to do the the pre the pre show kind of. Uh, what was it, interviews. interviews, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of the stuff. publicity I, and stuff. I, I put you guys off like four or five times. There was a, there was a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> you, you were busy, man. Oh, hey, yeah. you guys had your hands. <laughs> I'm like full. I, like I ran to you, like I just put my finger, like uh, uh, <laughs> maybe five we're, minutes. We're like <laughs> hey, understandable, man. You clearly yeah. had some stuff. I think that going was like on. a two way street because we're like you know we didn't want to like not talk to you because yeah. you you got us in and oh, you yeah. hooked us up, but. You know, we'd see you, and it's like, want to bug he's, you either. He's he's really busy. He looks busy. <laughs> it's, busy yeah. it's like let's let's go talk to a couple other brewers, and then we'll come back to Rob. We'll, we'll swing back by. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. So before we hit break, uh, let's. We actually, we do have some beers on the table. Yeah, we, we are, are drinking. drinking. What, what we are, are we drinking? drinking? We'll start so. with the guest here, Rob. Go ahead. I'm drinking a Santan Mood Juice. Um, nice. We just moved into a new office here on Broadway. Um, it's an office suite, and so we have a. A nice space, a little bit bigger than where we were at Huss. Um, it's an undisclosed location. Nobody's yeah. going to know. <laughs> no, well, oh, it's online. We might have some. I don't know. Anyway, um, um, we're, we're, we're you it's know the Guild Cave. Man. We're very close to <laughs> yes. Bowlers on Broadway, but we're close to this uh, Quickie Mart. Yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, you know, we went in there and they got some Arizona beer. So we, bought, I bought this. Um, they've got some other local brands in there. They've got a garage station. So we're going to nice. explore that. We're going to, you know, we don't just you know have everybody's top tier beers shipped to us or anything like that. Right. We, we, we play the field. We, we work with, we work with people who sell our beer. So Absolutely. we're going to form a relationship with them. Of, of course, boulders, um, you know, so we're in a new neighborhood. So we're getting to our friends. So yep. this was a awesome. great beer available off the shelf in a convenience yep. store. So we, we went with it. Some hot and, juice. And, and you'll never have to long for a Tecate or Dos Equis or Pacifico. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me and Jeff are enjoying the uh, Belching Beaver uh, Deftones Phantom Bride IPA. This is good. This is delicious. I'm glad they put in a can. It was just in 22, the Bombers, I think. Yeah. Aged, uh, yep. 16 ounce can. So that's a good one. Right on. And uh, I am drinking an IPA from uh, Ren House, which uh, Jeff, for some odd reason, still had a four pack of, which is the Spellbinder. Silly bastard. As he said that, and I was like, wait, what? You having that left? That was gone in a week for me. So thank you, Jeff, for bringing these. That, that's what I was waiting for. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Wait. <laughs> Paul, what are you drinking? Yeah, I was going to say, oh, Paul, I'm what's drinking, in that mug? I'm drinking some lovely tea. I'm uh, on a right. cleanse this week. So nice. <laughs> until Sunday, I'm uh, just... Paul. Oh, yeah, you're really, you're no beer. You realize this is a podcast, right? You could have said anything. It's just hard. Really I could have totally lied. It's yeah, just hard it's liquor in there. He's just he's an alcoholic. <laughs> <out, laughs> yeah, no, it's sure. actually all vodka. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're the hoppy craftsmen. Someone yeah. would have called bullshit. Yeah, that's yeah. probably true. <laughs> yeah, he's right. got some. He's got some hot water concoction with like, but there's no hops in it. Like, yeah, I, right. You, you could have yeah, put yeah, a hop or two in it. It's very boring. Some nice, perfect. Wet hop, wet hop your tea. Drag a hop through it. Perfect. All right, we'll take a break and we'll come back in a minute.
Okay, I was like, are you recording? I was like, he's going to tell me he's recording, right? All right, guys, welcome back. We're back from a break. Uh, here to talk a little more with uh, Paul and Rob over here at the Arizona Craft Brewers Guild. Chris, what are we going to talk about next? Uh, I love that everybody actually joined me on the, the other side, the dark side. I don't know what this is. We all got spellbinders yeah. now. Welcome to the club, guys. Yeah. Cheers. Oh, that's true. All four of us. Look at that. Except Paul, who's drinking tea out of his glass. Oh, never mind. He's got a hydro flask. Okay. All right. Yeah, but Paul's going to be clean. Yeah, that's true. Paul is probably the healthiest person in this room. Yeah. Yeah. He is. He is. <laughs> He's prepper Paul. He, oh, does, he does those mud runs. You know, like when oh, we're all, you, you know, when Jeff's not been drinking. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. Right. You got to do it for the rest of us, dude. Mud yep, run yeah. for the rest of us. I got it. Yeah. We'll see at the finish line, show that ultra with you. Yeah, give me a beer. Yeah. You know, I abstain during the week, but it just makes the beers on the weekends that, that much, better. much better. Yeah. No, no. That's the right way to do it. Makes sense. So, yeah, uh, you want to talk about, a little bit about more G- about GABF, right? So you guys are yeah. definitely going this year. What, what do you guys actually do when you actually go to GABF? Being you got to be excited. Arizona. you got to be pumped about so that. So in, in, since I've been the director, they have a program now. It's called, um, well, it, it's, a, it's the Guild's Pavilion. So um, I think they have 25 states represented, 25, maybe 30. Uh, we get to pour, uh, you know, the beers that we choose. They won't be found anywhere else on the floor. And so, you know, we've done that for, you know, the last couple of years. Um, I will tell you, um, it's a great way. It's, it's, it's a smorgasbord of, of, of different. Um, it's a great way to sample other states. Um, it's a good entree into the entire festival. Um, we, we pour, uh, 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 like four per, per, per session. So, um, you know, from Arizona, you get some, um, from, um, you know, if you, you know, grew up in Ohio and you want to catch up what's going on, you can have the four or five beers they have, and you can talk to a guild director who would tell you what's going on in your hometown, what's going on legislatively. So it's, it's cool like that. Um, you know, and, and, and in general, um, while I'm stalling for time, my Paul looks up the list of beers for um, that we're serving because I, I I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Damn it, um, Paul! Get on top of this, Paul! <laughs> Slacking. Like we're, you know, he had cue cards for me earlier, um, <laughs> but uh, he couldn't you're, write fast enough. You're fired again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, uh, so let me, well, well, you know, so, so the, the Great American Beer. I just I wanted to get this out. Right. Right. Um, I, I know it's fashionable now to not go to the actual floor festival um i get it but i i don't get it if you've never been and you're just following everyone's like oh don't go go to you know whatever crooked staves got going on go go to you know falling rock or i think even falling rocks probably falling out of favor for some groups right do all this other stuff all that supported by that festival and and i would tell you um the reason i've I've been going for over 10 years that's the that's the continuous streak i have um, I used to go to the, all the homebrew festivals too, or uh, conferences too, but I, I, I missed a couple in the last couple of years. Um, is that I go there and I run into people that I don't see unless I go there. So I've built relationships up, you know, and, it, and you know, there are people who are committed to being there. There are people who run the, the, the competition. Um, there are event people that I know. So that's why I go. Um, and, and, um, even if you're not into the industry in that bent, um, if you're networking, it's a great place. But even if you're just you're casually going, right. um, there's something to be said about the spectacle of that is the largest, you know, that's the granddaddy. Right. And, um, you know, if you get to know some people, um, sometimes the beers don't really matter as much. Um, and it's just more about the relationships and the conversation. And again, if, if you grew up from, from somewhere else and you can go to that region and just hit places that you might want to go to in the future. Hey, I want to visit my grandparents. They live, you know, in Indiana and I want to see some Indiana breweries and, and, you know, good, bad, indifferent or places in my town. It's a great experience. It's, it's, you know, right. um, it is, it's, a, it's a spectacle. Like people want to go to Oktoberfest and I think, you know, from a quality of beer thing, it's, it's, um, it's pretty focused, okay. you know, and, and then, uh, it's, it's can be kind of a, you know, a drinking fest. Um, but people still want to go, right? Right. I mean, so, I don't know. That, that's what we're doing. Paul, uh, have you have you found the beers that we're pouring? Yes. On which days? I have the list Thank right you. here. Whoa. Uh, at all the days laid down, I got all the beers set up. So we have Hus Brewing is going to have Orange Blossom there. Uh, the Perch will have their birth, Birdbath IPA, Uncle Bear's Ocean Beach IPA, 
Also, we'll have their Lost Viking Baltic Porter. And then we have Saddle Mountain bringing out their Clan Dusta and Scottish Ale. Uh, Santan bringing out their Yotes Pale Ale. Uh, Yotes Pale Ale. Nice. Yotes. <laughs> is it? You say Yotes? Ah, Probably. no way. It's a coyote beer. Yeah. 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 No, it's yeah. Yotes. Yote. Well, they call them the Yotes. That's true. <laughs> true. Yotes, whatever. Uh, Crooked Tooth is going to have their Cloud People. And then that brewery will have Strawberry Blonde. So um, what's really fun is we have some of the representatives of the breweries pouring those beers. And so you can imagine on, on the day that Huss is there pouring Orange Blossom, which I'll tell you, Orange Blossom, when I've seen it poured there, um, um, Sonoran's White Chocolate, people freak the fuck out about mm-hmm. those beers because, you know, maybe less so with Orange Blossom because I think there's a lot of those beers, but, but that, you know, we don't have it this year, but the Sonoran Chocolate, um, some of these beers, like, you know, the brewers come by. Even if, even if it's out there, it's, they understand the twist, right? So whatever beer, uh, sometimes it might be like, well, you know, why would you be interested in this? But when you see, they, they're interested in the twist and they're interested in, and they have no preconceptions about what the brewery is. They have no idea that it's been around for a long time or, or whatever. So we do get brewers come by. We do get some buzz, even on some of the beers that a lot of people might just dismiss, especially if they're packaged beers and all that stuff. It, you'd, be, you'd be shocked. And so... We have representatives from Huss to pour that beer, but they're also representing the other beers there, and they find it just like a gas to like you know understand and talk about these beers, and it takes their brain out of just selling their own beer and gets them excited about you know who we are and, and yeah. seeing the reactions and and you know um, same thing with the smaller brew pubs, yeah. um, they now like you know have to you know sort of handle this packaged beer and. Um, they don't know what to do about it. You know, it, it's a great experience from both sides. Um, so there is that. Of course, there's, you know, all the happenings going on. Um, so, you know, if you're going to go and you've never gone, you have to hit one day of the floor. I would say okay. Thursday is a good day. Um, or the Saturday first session right after the medal winners are announced. Mm-hmm. So if you're paying attention, you could be, you know, you could get the gold medal IPA. You could get the gold medal... Wow whatever or or you know uh it's it's kind of a cool thing and it, it's you know if you're just in it for you know you know the get beers or tick tick beers off your list yeah maybe it's not for you but um i'm in it for the whole deal yeah i'm sure there's a whole just a mess of things going on event wise is it so is it we've not been there so are there is there you said it's a a lot of breweries is there other things kind of like how our festivals here are where there's actually outside businesses coming as well or i think that do have to do with business is it like people selling koozies and shirts and glassware and all that kind of stuff too or yeah you know um <laughs> for many years and they don't have this association anymore um for many years they had an association with um wall shaving the, oh, yeah, the yeah, shavers yeah, yeah. they um when it was smaller um uh, they used to give to each brewer they used to give a like the beard trimming kit, like the electric beard trimming kit, like it was over the top. It was like, well, this is the cool, this is actually the coolest thing I've yeah. ever got. So every year I would actually, um, I would actually, um, um, they also had a, a, a trailer inside and they would at four barbershop things and they would trim your beard for you. So I would let my, I would let my stuff grow a little bit. And like, yeah. I would, I would like, yeah, I'm going to get this guy. He's going to know what he's going to do. And you know, it was, it was, it was, it was kind of one of the coolest That's- parts of it so like everyone else is lining up for like Luke Laris right and they get you know the raspberry they're their their, 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 their um, Belgian red yeah. um, well, I was like lining up I'm like I want to get my beard trim right now <laughs> yeah right you know and, and, and take care of that so it, it's got that going on for sure okay I mean I looked up that they think that that, that many people that are like in the brewing have beards like I don't know where they get that from at all <laughs> what, if, what are they talking about <laughs> facial hair talking about some people just prefer it that reference, yeah. that reference is lost on me. I feel, I feel like we're that's stereotyping people. That's unfair. It's true. Well, you know, well, you, know you could. You oh could wait, just, no, we're good too. You could really just good. trim it all off. <laughs> I mean, if you really wanted to, just go. You could say, hey, just just take it all off. <laughs> take, yes. You don't want to see that either. Just give me a give me a one. <laughs> you don't want to see that. Leave either. leave the brows though. I need to keep yeah. those. No, uh, so um, God, I hate to say this. It's an expensive ticket, and I never want to not do it. But there is a sort of um, uh, food pairing thing. Okay. I, I mean, look it up if it's still available. It's, it is a little spendy, but I, I tell you, it is like really the best 
pairing. It is like when I go there, I'm inspired to to try to run that kind of event. If I can figure out how to do it without, um, you know, paying the Phoenix Convention Center like twenty five thousand dollars or whatever um, <laughs> to get that done um, <laughs> and not, you know, have to. They don't listen to our show. You're fine. Don't worry about um, it. You know, it, it, it's tough. Uh, it, it is gr- it's great. I don't want everyone to know about it because I always want to go to it. And I don't right. want to be left out in the cold, but it is a great ticket. Um, it's kind of funny, though. Um, we were just talking about um, uh, Haas and, and how, um, you know, some people kind of poo-poo some of their beers. Um, there was this amazing pairing um, with this coffee beer, coffee kolsch, and it was literally the same almondy flavor profile it was a brewery from the southeast and the pairing was amazing and they had this in, in a nice presentation bottle and i'm like man they don't have the aroma that hus come has out of the can right so there's always these little eye-opening things um about um trying you know different beers different, different presentations you, you just never stuff. know yeah. you never know it's awesome who do we got to pay or blow to get elsie's back <laughs> Can we talk to somebody about that, right? I'm open to either, honestly. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. I can't speak to that. I, I wish I could help you out. Yeah. Everybody misses it. We do. It's so good. We miss it so bad. I mean, we're not teenage college girls, I guess. Or <laughs> yeah. we, we drink the Coconut Joe, I guess. But <laughs> so eh. or, or not. Eh. Upcoming, we have what's next for the Craft Brewers Guild? Um, we have um, um, Brewers Ball. Nice. Okay. November eighteenth. Um, it is November eighteenth. Okay. Um, it's like they did homework. What yeah. No. Shit? And it's got a sweet little logo on it. By the way, I like that. Yeah, it's, we, it's we went all black and gold, and, and I think actually we might sort of shift it, shift it to copper. Um, mm, nice. Black and copper. Arizona. Um, nice. Uh, it, it, it's um, it's it's a ball. Um, right. Last. Last year was our first year. We had it at the, at the Arizona Biltmore. Um, it was a um, uh, Gatsby theme, and nice. um, it exceeded my expectations um, in a number of ways. Um, let me tell you that you know, and again, this is where you know the ticket price is up there, but we don't see a lot of that money. I mean, we're yeah. talking about renting out the Biltmore and having to use their food and beverage program, which was outstanding. And the service, we use professional pourers um, because we want to free our brewers up to have a good time. Um, it's 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 kind of spendy, so you know, the margin on that is like, you know, ten percent. <laughs> you know, as, yeah. It, it, it's, so when people are like, hey, do I get a discount or is there an early bird? I'm like, man, we'd be losing money if we cut the price. It, right. The price is the price, and honestly, it's an industry event for industry, and we hope that if someone's really interested in, in networking with us. Um, and, and, and having this richer experience and, you know, um, having that date night um, kind of thing and, and, and sort of, again, transporting yourself to a different time, different era with friends and, and, and people that you want to get to know, that is the event. It just, that's what it is. Um, you know, and, you know, it, 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 I thought it was going to be a tough sell for my breweries because they're like, well, what, what's, how do, this is, we, right. we don't know what, what, what is this? And, and, uh, I said, look, we want to have, you know, you work with some of these bigger malt companies and, and hop companies and, and service providers and equipment. We want them to come and network with you. And they're not going to come to Strong Beer and walk across a grassy field in the heat. And, and they're not going to want to wade through everybody in their short pants to see somebody in, who's pouring beer who's not maybe the owner. Maybe he is. Right. And try to do business. This is, um, you know, this is our little industry event and we hope to you know attract policymakers and important people in the industry and we have um so um if people are inclined to join us that's the ticket price um it but the experience i think um is great we people who attended um stepped up their game my breweries stepped up their game i mean um to see some of the people you know dressed up didn't recognize them (laughs) Uh, it took a while for me to do it. I, I fully expected someone to sort of like try to like put on the tuxedo T-shirt or something. Like, you know, that wasn't going to fly. And, and they took right. it seriously. And um, from this point forward, I'm, I'm here to say that, you know, people are going to bring their game wow. on that front. I mean, you're going to see people, um, you know, just nail it. And, and because they believe in, in the idea of, of 
beer is timeless and beer shouldn't just be about a certain thing. It should be, it should cut across everything. So it, it's, I think we're going to have 30 breweries. We had like last year we had six food stations. Um, it was more, um, it wasn't, we had some tables, but it wasn't sit down because we wanted people to, to mix. If, if you sat at a table, you'd only know, who, it'd be like, we don't right. want it to be like a wedding where like you're at the, you know, the <laughs> kid's table or, you know, the friends of friends table. And table 28. Um, this hmm. is this is full access. This is uh, a good time, and this year it's at the Bentley Projects. It's not at the, uh, it, it, which is a warehouse in, in the in the old warehouse district. Uh, total great history in that building. Um, Still Gatsby kind of nineteen twenties. We're gonna do yeah. um, we're gonna do Speakeasy, which maybe people don't see the distinction, but we are yeah. moving an era. Um, yeah. Yeah. We're moving ten years, so maybe do a little research. I mean, I think things are there's a, some crossover. Like I don't want to like, you know say hey it's like 70s prom and like you know you know you have to i don't want you to have 12 uh, uh, wardrobes after being with so want you know we want to make it universal for, I'm, I'm telling you for guys it's pretty easy yeah, it's pretty easy um you know the ladies are going to get into it hopefully and um it's a little more expensive for them i would imagine um but um you know i uh, just painted with a big brush sorry but if if <laughs> if, if, if uh <laughs> If one, you know, I just we want everyone to have a good time, and we want everyone to sort of buy into the to the fantasy of it. Right. So very cool. We're still trying to figure out who we get to pitch in for a VIP table. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> we we need a different employer to buy us a table. <laughs> Was it a 10, 10 person table you can get? You can get a ten person table, but um, you know, I mean, um, like I said, it, margins are really slim on this, and and you know, it, it's just like it's it's one of those things like. We don't hatch it as something like, how can we make more money? It's like, how can we bring an experience that's never been done? And it hadn't in Arizona. How can we How can we do that? And there's some other states that do it. Um, you know, I don't often, like, say Texas does some things better than us. But Ooh. Texas has a really great Brewers Ball, and, and I hope to someday, like, attend. Um, uh, because I want to learn about that, and I, I want to see what, but, you know, you know, Texas has this whole culture of that, too. So, you right. know. I think we need uh, our uh, patrons to actually uh, go ahead and donate more <laughs> to get us there. So, you have patrons? We do. We we do have patrons. Wow. Uh, we actually have a few here in the valley, and then we actually have uh, another podcast in San Diego. Yeah, kind wow. of a big so, deal. Making yeah. like making yeah. like making like ten dollars a month. Well, I should introduce my patrons package. Um, Whoa! That I'm going to make up right now on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, you know. You know, I guess uh, after uh, so we just talked about the uh, Brewers Ball um, coming up. After that, again, it's honestly, not too far away. Strong Beer 2018. Yeah, you guys getting geared up for that? Must planning must be underway. I mean, if not, probably for months now. Yeah, uh, most of our stuff is on a 12 month schedule. I mean, right. like like uh, it obviously ends with uh, uh, once once doors close, um, we sort of have a, a wrap. Um, we have some uh, customer surveys and and you know. I know, um, I know some people probably think that their comments, you know, on Facebook don't get listened to. They do, yeah. just yeah. not that day. Maybe not that yeah, week. Right. <laughs> um, we, you know, I'm here to tell you, uh, I take those things very seriously and personally, and I do have people who can read them and, and sort of relay them to me, and, and um, you know, but um, and we, we we try as best we can to. Yeah, to, to isn't that isn't that Paul's job now? Not even no, I, I no. I'm serious. No, it, it, no. It, 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 it's it's that. I mean, I know he feels personally and strongly about things, and he's got too much information about what goes into it. And, and no, no. I mean, I, I want I want right. someone from the outside, and we do. We have we have um, uh, I, I, we have a new marketing company. Um, we have um, you know, we're using the same event company, but we, they're they're refocusing. We're we're trying to get some, you know. Uh, we we feel we, we, I know that my members and myself and Paul and our team we want to put on the best event possible, but um, we're so into it that um, it's a very important for us to have some outside um, people to, to to take those opinions and and put them in a in a non uh, in, in a manner in a, in a way that we can actually task it out right. Um, you know it, it's tough. You know it. Sometimes, sometimes being someone who's my friend or somebody who has a, a really great relationship with me is a tough place because they don't want to tell me things, and I need to have them tell somebody else again and be task based and like, yeah. what is the actual problem? And, and 
Um, so yeah, um, there is a little bit of separation, but yeah, I'll I'll poke it in. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll you know, it, get, it gets my own best advice, and it's not a, an uncommon thing. You know, I what I don't want is me or Paul or just to, you know go off on somebody on Facebook. I mean, mm-hmm. um, you know, the best advice I've, er, that I've heard it, is like nobody ever gets a promotion by filling in the box, the status box on Facebook. True. Nobody. But all that's to say you guys are gearing up and trying to take that constructive criticism from the previous years, I guess. I mean, yeah. Has the, are, do you guys experience a lot of that? I mean, I, I can't, I, don't, I, I wasn't there the last strong, I wasn't at the long, last strong I, beer vest. I was, you know, and I, I, I say, was standing uh, in a beer line uh, in the wilderness. Yeah, you were. Uh, and thank you for that because you got some no beer problem. for me. Uh, but I mean, you know, I got VIP this last year. I got in smoothly. Uh, there wasn't a ton of issues there. So that's usually one for that part that people always have an issue with is entry. Like it's yeah. just taking forever. Yeah. It went really smooth. Uh, I mean, for the most part, it, like I said, it was great. There's, I think there's definitely things that you guys have done every year that I've seen that actually has been easier. Bathroom situation is way better than it was uh, in the past. There's it's definitely, I think water is still one of those things that's probably hard to kind of gauge, but water is always one of those where it's like, eh, it could be water there still, I don't know. Yeah. And then you come back later and there's gone. <laughs> yeah, um, it, it's, it's, you know. it's weird. I mean, like, you know, you wouldn't think you had to have somebody manning a water station, but we, <laughs> I guess we do. Um, a couple reasons. One is like, you know, like people, I, 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 I guess we just assume that everyone knows how to operate a tap. And you think. So when, it, when, when the water runs out and they leave the tap on and CO2 runs out, like we're screwed. Right. Um, yeah, there's there was a learning curve on that, and 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 you know anyone can sit and say, oh, of course that's a problem. I would have told you that was a problem, but like you know, no nobody. I'll tell you, nobody ever gave. First of all, we give away water for free, right? Because we think we need to. A lot of festivals will sell you the bottle of water and look at his revenue stream or, or whatever, right? You know, getting that much water. I mean, it, I mean, in, 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 in strong beer, it's like ten thousand people. It is literally like, you know. Um, a problem that a lot of people haven't had to solve. Right. We want free unlimited water to the best we can for everyone that comes to our festival. Um, so, and we want to get away from the bottled water. Well, I mean, we, it, we could drop we could drop oh, cases yeah. and cases and cases, and, and um, it's really kind of a study. We do we do the bottled water. It's kind of a study on human nature. Yeah. People will take two or three, put them in their pockets mm-hmm. because they think they need them. Um, so you know we, we're trying to re- eliminate the, you know, the plastic waste and um as we know from the water challenge uh maybe um every one of those waters uh so every 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 water bottle that you see uh two or three of those went through the ro process so um yeah. we're trying to be efficient with it so you know. Heck yeah, I, I love the giant fans now too. That was a, that was a good addition one year with all the big fans of the air and the the oh, misters going. Those are great. Yeah, uh, I mean it's funny like you know every, it happens in February, but this is Arizona in February. It's, it always it's happens on that week just before things start to get warm. It's ah. like every time strong beer comes, you just you're like you're hopeful. Yeah, but it starts to warm up just a little bit, right. and then it's hot as balls. I'm, I'm, I'm like beer. one year yeah. away from making that like our sort of Arizona Groundhog Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because that like really, really signals right. Yeah, um, something, and I'm like, oh, yeah. you know, but I'll tell you, um, um, you know, early tickets are for us are better than late tickets because once I know what the landscape is, and I'm not waiting on this chunk to either show up or not show up because based on the weather, like, I literally sometimes have two weeks to decide whether I'm buying heaters yeah. and more tents or right or these misting stations. Right. Yeah, and it's tough, and like you know, you 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 know, those guys aren't like. Oh yeah, you know we're gonna give you the best price. I mean, they know they, right. they're gonna be able to like rig mm-hmm. me over the coals when you know the storm front comes in, and I gotta switch from heaters to coolers or coolers to heaters. You know, so yeah, no, well, that stuff costs money, man. Oh hell yeah, it's seven acres, and, and like think of the fencing to, to fence off seven acres. Yeah, I was gonna say there's always a buttload of fence at Strong Beer, which is good though. Oh That's yeah, good. hey, you know I, I'll say that uh, keep out the riffraff. <laughs> A lot keep of riffraff about you. There. So <laughs> keep still, you out of there. I'm all over that place. I'm sorry. Can't keep me out. Uh, so it's the same venue this year, right? Or next yeah, year coming yeah. up. Same. We're going to stick with that for, for a time being for a while. Or are we going to ever come to a point where we might outgrow that? No, no, no. There's no outgrowing that. And I'll tell you why. Um, it is centrally located near hotels, light rail. Um, it is, uh, you know, it is the, the place where anything major that's happening in, in Phoenix Metro um, where it's getting, and that's why um, there's this Lost Forest Festival coming up. Um, and I'm gonna keep a close eye on that because that's a that's a bigger deal, that's a national deal, and 
I've been arguing for many, many years with the city of Phoenix, like we need to put some more hardscape in place. We need, we need to build that park up. Yeah. And um, the the Pride Festival's there, which has more numbers than us. There's a couple other signature festivals. Yeah, they pack them in. I'm like, there's no reason that why well, we all have to buy fencing um, when we can't start to plan for that. And so, um, you know, I said my piece about it, and then they negotiated this festival, and I'm I'm, I'm hoping that they. Um, take care of the, the park. Um, we'll see uh, what happens, but I, I'm hoping like this is our Central Park, like yeah. New York City. This is where if there's a, you know, a need to gather people together, that's where it has to happen. Like there's no yeah. other place that has that much open space, um, and right. so we need to build that way. Like if you go to other cities, they have festival parks. We don't have any any. You know, I, I'd love to for them to the VA to have more parking yeah. or more hardscape or more bathrooms. Yeah. Like, there's no, there's no music bowl there. There, right. there could be, I mean, that's a, it's a great park. And, and so I want to be part of the solution. What people don't know for all those trees that you see at real Wild and Woody, we donate those to right. the city of Phoenix. And right. some of them go on Seal Indian School, Indian School Park because we want more shade. Uh, I think this year I'm going to more focus on the downtown area where, where they have, you know, you see, you see a stump because someone right. cut it down or the tree didn't survive, um, you know, where a tree was. We, we want to put more trees in downtown. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're trying to look out for the places that we can only do these events. We can only do Real Wild and Woody at this point in the Phoenix Convention Center. Nope. We can do something else somewhere else, but there's no indoor space that's centrally located that, that, that serves that purpose. There's no other place than Steel Indian School's part. So we've embraced that. We just have to figure out we're, we're not the deepest pockets. We're not going to say, oh, yeah, hey, we had a great festival, and now we're going to put in, like, you know, 24 bathrooms and, you know, erect a building and, and you know, and whatever, and, and put in, um, you know, places where a truck can roll in and, and with we could yeah. put up tents and all this other stuff. We have to work through that, and, you know, we have to get other people excited. We have to find our patron on that. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah, right. Seriously. <laughs> so uh, general mission – VIP, uh-huh. super VIP again. Um, you know that that's out there for debate. Um, I think I think the theory that I had was one of um, I know what happens at GABF. I know what happens at some of these other festivals. And we wanted to open it up to the general public. You know, there were some hiccups with it. So um, you know, I, I I don't know what we want to do. All, all I wanted is like, hey, we're already there. A bunch of people that maybe people want access to right. are just getting done setting up and, and they want a beer. Um, you know, the execution wasn't where I wanted it. Um, so I, I'm not, I'm not sure, but we do want to have some sort of engagement on, on that night. We just have to figure out what it is and, and we have to, we have to do better at it. So I know that I'll probably have a beer in the park there, but <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe we'll do that offsite. Um, we're still working through that. Maybe like access to it, and then some kind of like after kind of party thing, maybe or I guess some. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, you know, we, meet the brewers, maybe something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So the you know, it's it's tough for us to do an after party uh, on Saturday because we're fighting daylight. I'm sure everybody's. Uh, and we're trying to get out of there, and and, and uh, people, you know, some people are going back to other parts of the state. That's why I said that, that's why I thought Friday night, a lot of people are from other parts of the state. Right. Um, they've got an easy setup, and they've got some time, and like. You're already there. You're parked. Um, that's that was the theory. Um, I don't know how else we would have done it without trying it. Right. And um, but I, I acknowledge that it could have been better. And, and there, I'll tell you, there's a lot of things that I think people say. Oh man, it was amazing. It was great. You know, I see things. Paul sees things. My event coordinator see things. My brewer sees things. Sees see things. And we always want to make it better. Right. Um, I, I don't think I'm ever going to come to this airtight event, but we're gonna always going to try. Um, I mean, there's stuff that personally drives me nuts that probably no one even sees or, or cares about. Um, That's the kind of attention to detail it takes to pull it off. I mean, yeah. honestly, you got to you. The little things that piss you off are minor grievances. By the end of the day, for me as a customer that gets to go there and enjoy it, so. right? You know, it, here's the thing. I mean, yeah, I mean, for, for it, it is a fundraiser. We we are there to um, uh, raise funds so we could do what we do. Um, if we were just there about you know, m- maximizing the actual event experience, you know, we'd hire somebody and they'd take us to the cleaners and we would have nothing left. So it's, it's a balance and it's always been a balance. Like it, it's always been, um, 
brewers putting together something, you know, either together on their own or through an organization. So, you know, I, I just hope that people understand if you're if you're actually going to calculate if you're going to if you're going to be as mercenary as calculating what beers you're going to drink and what the value is, you're going to I mean, I you we're going to lose and I don't I don't want you to come because you'll be disappointed. But if you're in it for the community and and knowing that that money funds our organization to, you know, do things, even if, you know, you don't see them, I mean, it's just small things like, you oh, know, yeah. we, we've evolved the growler law for, for quite a while. And, and, you know, if it wasn't for us, you wouldn't have these gas station growler fills and you wouldn't have, right. uh, you wouldn't even be able to use those stainless steel computers. We, we'd all be using glass. Oh, no. I mean, I know. So, so we do appreciate that. That is the best thing ever, right? Jeez. Um, the crawler thing. I mean, you know, by the time we had gone through all these iterations, um, we were able to just sort of wave our hand over this and say, no, this is good. Based on all our relationship and, and what you know about what we presented, um, we didn't have an issue with the state with that. They were like, okay, we understand. And, you know, they had some questions like, is it canning, is it not? And we, you know, we, we, we assuaged those things. And, and we said, brewers can do it. Uh, retailers can't because it's, it, there's a federal precedent on that. So, um, we didn't. We wouldn't have got to that t- point. We wouldn't have got to the table um, because I wouldn't have been hired, and our lobbyists wouldn't have been hired, and we wouldn't have the the man hours to, to sit and talk to those guys. And that's what we need to do. Absolutely. Yeah, that's super red. Paul, Paul, what what do you have going? You're super quiet over here drinking your tea, man. We, to, we need to lube you up with something besides just tea to get you get you in the conversation, man. What's, what's what, or something like yeah, that. right. <laughs> What do you have going on, man? What, what do you... Uh... Well, like I said, I'm very, very new to this. Only about four months. So I'm just soaking in so yeah. much information. A lot to learn. Still a lot of things I haven't experienced at like uh, Great American Beer Festival. It'll be my first time going there ever and working there as well. Uh, also Brewers Ball, first time for that. So I'm soaking in everything that Rob's teaching me and everything else that we've got going on, especially when it comes to uh, legislature, working with the state on certain things. Like Rob, Rob was just talking about the whole growler situation and we helped... Uh, that go along uh, so there's all kinds of stuff we're always working on whether it's small projects or big projects cool. uh, so I obviously being a communications manager on a weekly basis I'm contacting uh, dozens of people on a regular basis and I work on multiple newsletters that I send out throughout the week to inform uh, some of our big uh, breweries out here we have some allied members that are members of our guild that uh, help us out in certain ways and so we inform them as well as what's going on in the market and then i have uh, another newsletter that goes out to a lot of the uh regular beer drinkers out there that really appreciate knowing more about what's happening uh especially a local wise event wise and things that are coming up big festivals events things like that so so, so newsletter wise can it you just go to your website and actually sign up for it or is it something that you know what yeah especially yep. that last one yeah, yeah, we have a, we have a website uh, link where you can sign up right away, and it's very easy, uh, simple membership that you can sign up, and you get the email. And nice. we'll... so, so we have um, we have awesome. our general subscription, and then we have um, Tuesday Z Brews, which uh, we're supposed to do a little uh, little live Facebook here pretty soon, just to uh, give everyone a, a taste of what's going on. But, um, you know, it... Um, I, I, w- I will mention that we're sort of in transition um, into a new PR company. Um, you know, um, what that means is, well, what that means is we went from, you know, when I started about 25, 30 breweries to, to close to 100. And, and we needed to have, um, you know, just a bigger team. And um, uh, we, we're still working with our previous company. They're doing some uh, different focus things for us. But, um, um we're still working through all the logistics of, of, of so I'm, I'm here to say, you know, people might fall out of contact or, or but, but uh, we should have things in place pretty soon. Um, I think what people might notice more is we've done a good job of promoting who the guild is. We, we, we marketed a, a new logo, a new identity. We're always going to try to um, sort of identify with the, the festivals that we do and the things that we support. And especially when it comes to, to lobbying, it will still be the Arizona Craft Brewers Guild. But we're shifting to Choose AZ Brews. We need to send a message that um, we are different. If you haven't looked at us lately, there are a number, the things that we talked about, the things that you guys know, that right. a lot of your listeners know, we need to get, we need to move that idea to to 90% of the Arizona public. Right. And, and know that they're, 
those things exist. So you'll see a lot more choose AZ brews. You'll see a lot more um, focus on sending people to the breweries or, or enjoying their products directly. Um, so that's a different focus for us. Um, again, that, that doesn't come for free. So, um, yeah. um, you know, we, we hope that people um, understand that we're, you know, we're using that, that those funds um, to, to, you know, help everyone else enjoy the things that we all enjoy and, 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 and really build some depth to what we've got going on. What's more important to the future of the Craft Brewers Guild? Is it more breweries or is it just more people and bre- more people enjoying what we have? Um, it's, 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 I think it's, it's more people enjoying what we have. The, yeah. the breweries have their own track. Yeah. Um, people get into this industry based on different signals. Um, if we have people celebrating Arizona, enjoying Arizona, purchasing Arizona, um, that's going to help yeah. the growth. Um, Absolutely. Um, you know, what we, what I would ask people who listen to the show is to understand that um, um, when you say breweries, it's a lot of different things. Um, yeah. And it's not just breweries. It, it's, it's, well, there's different models and there's, there's different focus. So by way of example, um, you know, if you went to this great pizza place, um, mom and pop place, you enjoy it, you enjoy the focus and the tension and, and all that stuff. Um, you don't necessarily go, well, you know, this is great that uh, um, this is in downtown Phoenix. I live in Chandler. When are you going to have a, when are you going to open a new location near me? Yeah. And then um, this is really great. Um, I don't get to go out very much. When can I buy your stuff in the grocery store? Um, when can I buy the, 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 can you half bake these and I can just pick them up? Like yeah. think about <laughs> that. Um, yeah, right. So there are different models. And, and so, um, you know, Maybe you're not ex- 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 excited about stuff you pick up on the grocery store. Maybe that's not your thing, but it is a thing for a lot of people, and um, it's where the volume comes from. Yeah. And you know, I'm not speaking for someone who's like, "Oh, we're just running rough shot over everybody in the grocery store." We're not. Um, you know, oh, yeah. we're, we, you know, Arizona, Arizona by volume, Arizona produced products beer wise, we're less than one percent, less than one percent. You know. Yeah. So. If, if the Cardinals had less than 1% fan base in Arizona, where would they be? Yeah, not, not probably not playing in Arizona anymore. <laughs> yeah. No, so we need to change that equation a little bit. And, yeah. and, and I think because we're integrated in the community and because we you know, have smaller places that um, have found a niche, um, we're going we're gonna to be okay. But, uh, but if you don't buy our products, if you don't support us, we're going to go away. Yeah. Um, we're just not going to be here. Um, you know, and... and Again, like if, if um, buying an off-the-shelf pale ale or IPA isn't your thing, that's great. But just don't go out of your way and you know disparage it. Oh yeah. Um, don't don't um, or do, but just just know that you're being a dick. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, because you're Good. really you're, you're really going out of your way Good, to, to to ruin someone else's vibe. Yeah. And and, and unnecessary. You think about this: if you go in the grocery store, like uh, people literally make their decision on what. If ah, uh, I'm looking for, I don't see their brand. You know what they pick up? They pick up something, you know, with a unique label and they oh, I found a new beer. Well, what is that new beer? They have no idea. No. Um, and so we're fighting that game too. Um, we need to change our sticker. Volume. Don't don't be a dick. Drink local. Yeah. 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 I mean I mean you can do whatever you want. <laughs> I just want Bruce. I just want you to understand what the with the mathematics on there. Absolutely. Right. So Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean it's if, important well, information. Well there's I mean there's a there's a war, you know. If you want to talk about war, be- war between uh, you know, big with uh, liquor and and wine, all, wine, wine, and spirits. wine and spirits. But we, we talked about before is that there's there's a lot of that goes on in the grocery store, and a lot of people, you know, like you said, there's a giant billboard of other beer, and there's a small section of craft beer that are there too. And people, you know, they get this like sticker price for a lot of beers, and that's a hard thing to do too. You go in there and it's like, I don't pay fourteen dollars for four beers. I'm going to pay eighteen dollars for 30 yeah you know. I, I, if you if you're shopping beer like you shop like, i don't know like do you shop gas that way i mean you, I, you like go across the street to save like a nickel per gallon i mean i don't know maybe you do i i i it's, you know I, some I, people do yeah, sadly enough yeah but um, it is what it is right some people recognize the quality i mean i think a lot of people do well it's, it's, so there's a qual there's a qual I mean, there's quality uh first of all uh, if you're putting stuff in a package it has a quality it, um, you know, it it has to have a quality because it has, 
or it's not going to be there. Especially if you talk about chain grocery stores, it has to have a, it has to have a 90 day shelf life. Whether you choose to say I'm going to drink a 90 day beer, um, that's your choice. But it has to have that quality. So you know, stylistically, there's no I like this style and it has more quality than another style. That doesn't that you know. Then well, all you're saying is I like a certain beer, right. and that's fine. Um, but style doesn't style and quality. They're they're not they're mutually ex- exclusive. Um, but you know, everyone wants to know what's going on with the new breweries. Think about that. What's going on? What's going on that's new? Because there's some awesome beers going on in established breweries that you might not find out unless you actually go. And I'm not throwing uh, anyone under the bus here, but I think a lot of people enjoy Dragoon. So I'm using them as an example. Yeah. They make a great IPA. Their stronghold is packaged. It's also awesome. But if that's the only thing you knew about that brewery, maybe that's enough. But if you think, oh, maybe they're just two-dimensional. But if you go down there, they got a they got a crap load of, of, of taps on. Um, they do an amazing anniversary thing. I think they're quietly, um, they're not, you know, really bragging about stuff. I think they're doing yeah. a great job. Um, so that's a lot of breweries, yeah. actually. That's that's a lot of breweries that people pass over. So absolutely. Um, it, it you know do you know the old uh, the old well this is dating myself again. <laughs> people go into you know when people actually would go into Blockbuster or whatever. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like the whole, whole like, everybody oh, here's been to a Blockbuster. Hi, um, what do you have that's new that's good? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like. <laughs> Nothing. You, you know what right. I mean? Like, yeah. what do you have that's in that's new that's good? Yeah. I mean, these breweries aren't blockbusters. But. <laughs> I was going to say, I, but, a lot, but a lot of them treat that way. Well, what I like about the Choose a Izzy Brew site is that there actually is a upcoming brewery section. So, like I guess that, sorry, but I love that. I mean, I like to see that. I like to see what actually is coming here in, in the, you know, the base yeah, of the yeah. valley and, and Tucson and Flagstaff. New, new is exciting. Right. But, um, there's, there's all kinds of new stories. There's, you know, an incredible amount of new stories. Um, New, new people, um, new uh, taps that maybe only occur in the brewery, um, you know. Well, and then the partners tab, too, is really nice. So you actually have all the partners that not necessarily are, like I said, not breweries and things like that, but it has something to do with Arizona beer in general. Our, our organization is focused on um, moving beer culture forward. Obviously, we're going to be focused on Arizona brands. Um, and again, I'm speaking for myself, but I, I think... Uh, my members largely agree if you bring a, a beer to our state we're going to be interested or i'm going to be interested if you hire people in the state you're in my respect because that means you're supporting the brand and you're not just dumping it here and you just don't have a lot of access and you're not just kind of throwing spaghetti up, up against the wall and see what sticks if you put a brewery in our state um you're going to get my love um so we do have some people who are based out of state that have brews here and, and they're part of the culture and all those people are part of the culture some are obviously more influential in the positive direction. Um, so, you know, we, we have hundreds of people who work for breweries that are our state, and, and we love and respect them because someday we're going to have them work for our breweries. But everybody's if everyone can educate people about what's what happens on the shelf, grocery store shelf, that, that world is completely different. And, like, you could live your whole life and never go buy a beer in the grocery shelf. We totally get that. Yeah. But... Um, even if you're not interested, as an organization, as a culture, we have to have people who have those businesses in the state be successful. Because if they're not, it's going to cascade down. So you can say, hey, I really don't like this brewery. But if they do a significant significant volume and their market crashes, guess where all that beer's going? They're still going to make the same amount of beer. Yeah. Um, they're going to open tap rooms. They're going to cut prices. We don't want to see that because that deteriorates from the overall health of our our, our, our our culture and our organization. We don't want to see anyone bring beer from out of state because their market crashed, bring it here and cut, uh, you know, putting it out at, yeah. at, at, at uh, you know, drastically cuts it, you know, prices. We don't want to see the result of um, consolidation um, change the mathematics about what it takes for our breweries to put on a quality product. We don't want to see price cutting. We want to see um, fair prices um, but if someone is out there um, doing things out of desperation instead of opportunity, it's going to hurt us all. So oh, yeah. we need people to be successful at all levels. So what you're saying is I shouldn't uh, run with my my theme of Crazy Eddie's Bargain Basement Lounge Craft Beer <laughs> Bar. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not a, 
It's not on the table. I shouldn't do that. There, 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 well, there are opportunities <laughs> at all levels and all strata. But if you're doing it out of opportunity oh, well. versus desperation, there's a difference, right? It's true. Right. Um, we want people to trademark, by the way, because anybody's listening. So that's a trademark that name. <laughs> yeah, it's official. It's a tra- it's a, yeah. We want people to find their business opportunity with a plan and execute. Um, so um, we're not against, you know, discounted or, or, or you know, differently priced beers. Um, but again, if it's done on a desperation, um, that means we got problems, and and, and we hope to um, um, not have that. We want people to find the right model, find the right price point, find the right uh, environment. Um, so it's, it's really easy to say, Hey, I'm never going to, I don't care about this and you don't have to, but just understand that, you know, and I'm not just talking about Arizona brands. If, if Odell runs to a problem or Sierra Nevada runs to a problem, um, you know, you can, we, we all have problems and we, we've got really big problems that they run into problems, right? <laughs> I mean, that, that means that we're going to see a lot of their beer in doses and, yeah. and it may not be code fresh. They won't have the sales support. A lot of people pick it up because they see an opportunity. Um, it just brings everyone down. So. Um, if you support the industry, you have to sort of understand that. You can be opportunistic and say, well, I hope that happens because I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, and then I'm going to open my own put whatever. I mean, but just understand <laughs> that it's a thing. There's, yeah. there's no, there's no, um, we're in an environment. There's no um, sort of walling yourself off from all that that's going on. Absolutely. Well, um, this is all going to be on the quiz, by the way. <laughs> everybody, get oh, your man, number two a, pencils out. There's Ty a test. Well, I was going to do uh, a flat screen Friday with every pint uh, at this, this place, so that might be desperate. I don't know. Yeah, eh, we'll see. <laughs> uh, so actually, I, you know, I, I'm not sure if we touched on it last time we were here. We actually talked to you, Rob, but um, the independent logo, the Brewers Association. Uh-huh. Did we yeah. talked about that last time. No, we didn't. So okay. I'm, we should. I, I really want to yeah. talk about that because that's something. At least what your opinion is on it. Right. Yeah. Um, What do you think of that? Regardless of what I think, um, it's a thing. Um, It's true. It's It's going to be going away. Is it it something in the right direction? I I think there are people who immediately seize upon, um, this is really cool, this is going to happen. And I think you should take their sentiment at heart because um, a couple things. One is... um, the Brewers Association, Brewers Association didn't just go, hey, we're going to design a logo. They could have done that years they ago. could have done that forever ago, yeah. Right. The important thing to remember is they're, they're going to have a public um, consciousness program around this, and they're spending some money on it. Yep. And, um, you know, there are some breweries that have opinions like, I wish it was this, or that. I think yeah. cl- clearly there's that sentiment among some folks. But again, remember everybody wanted their crack. Everybody, something. everybody who has an opinion on this already understands the problem. Yeah. So you could say, oh, well, this is I don't, I don't think they need to do this. You already know. You already know. It's not for you. No, it's not for you. Right. It's exactly right. And I'm, again, this goes back to the people who um, look for their brand, don't find it, but if they see that logo and they understand that, they know. And, and they've been bombarded by some messaging, um, they're they might make a different decision. Yep. Now, this isn't going to happen this year it's not going to happen next year it's going to take a long time and you're not going to see it on some packaging for years and years and years years and years and years three four years because even if i'm a brewery that supports it i have um, a supply chain that doesn't quit and also maybe i'm secretly holding out that the dimensions will be different and it works into my situation better Using right. in using what we have right in front of us, what since we might as well rent house spellbinder, it has the right. BA logo right there on the bottom. Yeah. They they adopted it immediately. Right. I think it was on their uh, Dankworth Galaxy can as well. But, but to begin so with. so to be fair, this is a sticker on a can, right? And so yeah. a lot of those supply chain things, people are buying cans way ahead of time, and they don't have this logo on them, and they're, and they're not throwing that away. They're not going to waste those you, cans. You, you, your right. minimum order is like hundred thousand cans. Right, and so they're going to. Fill those cans up, and then they're then they're gonna right. maybe put this logo and, on, and, or they're gonna hold out. And that's even up for debate. There's some there's some suppliers that they're not even gonna take your order at that level. Right. So yeah, there, there's that, and and um, you know there's the fact that regional guilds and state guilds like ourselves had probably uh, we had a plan in place to, to sort of capture that, and now we have to decide whether people want to see two logos or when we can't incorporate them together an that's, az logo and a ba logo yeah or... so yeah i mean you, you know it doesn't need to look like you know that 
NASCAR. It would be NASCAR. It would be NASCAR. Oh. Yeah. I thought you were with, I was going to say, like, NASA, where they had to put up, oh, they didn't know, like, what aliens would understand, so, like, there's some They just really put a bunch of stuff up there to see what's stuck. S- symbols about, like, and they put a Beatles record on yeah, it, you yeah. know, like, some, it's like, like, it's some like, orchestra music. Some Rosetta Stone where we have to understand <laughs> yeah, yeah, the yeah, entirety yeah, yeah. of civilization Perfect. on two logos. I'm, I'm, I'm trying um, to get this lowbrow, okay? <laughs> but we're, that's a little very high for some no. of our listeners. <laughs> I'm sure there, everybody there's can lo- handle There's that. a lot of cat people, so they might not understand those <laughs> things. Yeah. But you understand what's saying, like, so, so there's a whole. But here's the thing, it's not going away. The BA is spending a lot of money on it. A lot of supporting breweries. Um, I don't know what the. I think it's over two thousand now, are supporting it in some fashion. A lot of breweries on package, so maybe it's a sticker in the winter. But they all are seizing on um, the pennants, and and it's not to throw shade at people who aren't. It, it isn't. It's it's just. And people say, oh, well, studies show that it's not important to a lot of drinkers. Um, so, yeah, if we just followed studies, we wouldn't do dick. Uh, it's true. Our, our job is to understand it. I, I said before, 1% of the, of, of the volume of beer purchased in Arizona is made by Arizonans in independent Arizona companies. Does that mean we just fold our tents up and go home? No, that represents 99% opportunity. Yeah. And oh, so yeah. we're not, you know, we're not going to say, oh, I guess we failed. You know, mm. we might as well just call ourselves... Good Whatever. Job. Good job, guys. High fives. Yeah, no. We did good. Peace. We're gone. No, nice I mean, try. so, so, you know, all you graphic designers, I get it. I get <laughs> it. Um, you didn't win the bid. Um, you have better ideas. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying you don't. Oh, no. yeah. It, it's the, the logo is important. It's the idea. And the idea is already, and if anyone has an opinion, it's already in your head. You already know about it. It didn't cost anyone anything. For you to read about it on Facebook or, or get a press release, you know about it. It's absolutely right. true. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting to see what will happen with Arizona Craft Beer and how many more cans. I don't think I've ever – I don't think I've seen anyone else in AZ do it yet. I'm sure someone has, but right. I don't think I've seen it yet. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, just uh, as far as, like you said, as we're talking about – Like you said, We're talking about cans. Um, I just saw the other day Thunder Canyon from uh, Tucson. It's canning. Six Are they really? Yeah. yeah. Very nice. So have um, – I saw Tucson, Tucson's, or not Tucson, Tombstone. Jesus. Tombstone, it's yeah, the they're teeth. killing it right now. Yeah. Tombstone's got their canning line. Do you, like, do you like all the canning? Do you like all the canned releases? Is it, uh, um, what do you think of that? Um, I'm pragmatic all that limited, about it. All that limited beer. Uh, uh, I think it's weird. Um, if, if you think about what we all knew about cans, um, the definition is changing and I don't, I don't have it, it, it used to be like well this is a can and it had some properties that you all understood everyone understood and um, it's a little different now because now you, if you purge a crawler and you use some process that maybe wouldn't be used at a bar is that a can as well it has a different shelf life again mm-hmm. the, the standard used to be 90 days um, you know in a in a and these are beers. I mean, especially what's sitting in front of you. That beer is not going to taste the well, same in ninety days. No, no, and and that's and that's fair. You're right. So, so I I love these products because they do extend the shelf life of of an experience, and they're yeah, doing right, some great right, things right. for us. Um, now, what I caution a lot of people who do this across the country, or even in Arizona, or consumers is like you can't have that expectation, right? You can't have that expect. Ex- just imagine. Anything that you love in a can or, you know, can you imagine on a Trader Joe's shelf? Yeah. Right. Um, so it's not that, yeah. right? It's something different. So if you're a small brewery that this is your foray into packaging, then sell the hell out of those in special releases in your tap room. And exactly. if people hang on too long. And that's or big. If they hang on too long or if they ship them across the country, you get what you get. Yeah. But if you're enjoying them that week, or whatever yeah. that is, then within that's thirty great. days, yeah. right? But, but but this doesn't instantly get you into Safeway because it can happen. Oh like no. This. no! And 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 I'm sure most people who set out to, in most of these breweries that set out to do that plan to do it just as you said, sell it right through the tap room. I, I, I would say um, we should get someone like Ken Wilson from Lumberyard. We could talk all day <sighs> about the the chain, uh, um, Safeway fries and the barriers to entry and. Um, and and any any of these volume commitments like uh what that means to a brewery and and, and it's good and bad right Uh, if you if you get that contract if you get that go green light and you can't fulfill 
you may never ever get back on that shelf again. If, if you don't uh, have that space filled and your distributor um, can't continuously stock that product, um, because the grocery stores don't stock that, by the way. Right. I don't know if you guys know that. Right. We, it, the, 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 the distributors take yeah. that in there and put that in, right? Yeah. So, yeah. like, you could talk to, you know, whoever is working at that store. It's like, oh, I'll go look in the back and they'll get you one. But they won't instantly stock that shelf for you. They won't rotate it. They won't do anything. Right. Um, I got Ken Wilson. We, we, you know, I can even bring in, I can bring in Jeff Eater from Four Peaks if you want, who, who has, he used to work at Sierra Nevada. Um, those are people you got to know. The people who sell the most volume and, and like are the rock stars of people who package and rely on that. Um, most of us don't know. Yeah. Right. And you'll never know. You won't see them at a, at a, at a, at a, a promo. They won't yeah. hand you a glassware. They won't pour beer at a festival. But those guys who know their stuff, are, are you know the rock stars of they they they, they support that whole tier of, right. of what's going on i'm going to switch it up real quick um as is a as a and i and, and it's become very clear through the interview of the you know with you guys and you rob you guys don't you don't really sit you're not in the position of providing your personal opinion on things you're much more in the position of providing <laughs> oh, i'll a, give you a lot of personal well opinion. that's true but still but you also like to mix it up i mean you are you represent the Arizona Craft Brewers Guild. Yeah. What does the Arizona Craft Brewers Guild think of things like AB and Bev acquisitions and AB and Bev, you know, hanging out at Four Peaks? What is Arizona's Craft Brewers Guild opinion of that? Is it a big deal or is it you're all here to coexist and you're just trying to achieve a goal on your own? You don't really care. I mean, you guys obviously, you've made it very clear that the AZ Craft Brewers Guild has enough work ahead of it to deal with it's on its own. I mean, you really aren't sitting here spending your nights worrying about AB InBev. That's clear. But still, I mean, you know, I'm sure you guys have an opinion on it. Um, well, um, yeah, our, our opinion was um, when they became um, ABI that they were no longer voting members and, and didn't dictate the policy or the marketing or the direction of the guild. Um, they, are associ- they are allied members. Um, you know, um, they still have some value uh, to provide to members, uh, either through our guild, mm-hmm. through our Brewers Conference, which they've participated in, or individually. Um, I know there's a lot of people who still have relationships there that still borrow yeast, maybe use their lab, consult with them. Um, that relationship um, occurs independent of whatever we decide as a guild. Yeah. Right? Um, I think, by and large, Arizona has favorable laws to the things that are going on here in Arizona. Um, I, I think once we sort of lifted the cap on, on, on and provided blue sky for how large you can be, uh, whether you achieve that size or not, um, your company's evaluated on that. This is, this is interesting because I heard some um, pushback about SB 1030, how it was only for bigger breweries who are poised to grow. Contrast that with Texas, who had a, has a law now where if you reach a certain size, um, the beer that you brew in your production facility has to go to a distributor and brought back to be served at your own location. Jesus. Um, so you would think that a lot of small breweries are like, yeah, screw those guys, screw them. But a lot of Texas breweries, most of the Texas breweries, and, the, and the Tex- Texas uh, Brewers Guild said, no, we don't stand for that because this changes our... Um, this changes the value of our company. What you're saying is um, we can't grow to that size, and if we grow to that size, our, our, our potential changes. So think about that. Yeah. Um, and right now, the only brewery that's impacted in Texas is Oscar Blues. Mm-hmm. Do you think that small breweries of Texas really care about Oscar Blues? No. Mm-hmm. They care about someone limiting their potential. Um, so I just threw all my members under the bus that are small that maybe thought that way. I apologize, but it's just the way you think about it. Um, so there are relationships with, with, with ABI through Four Peaks. Um, we, we have great laws. The second that something happens here in Arizona through ABI, we will be all over it. Oh, yeah. But for us to, over Christmas, two years ago now, coming up in December, to just kick them out, that's dumb. Yeah. That's dumb. Um, you know, I, there are people who have very strong opinions about that either way. Oh, yeah. But 
I'm here for the long-term interests of my members. So whether they believe it or not, um, um, through the board, there's no, there's no, there's no self-interest when you know the members of our board say we're good with putting them in this status. They don't get anything out of that. They don't get anything out of of supporting um, that decision. Yeah, they're just here because they provide value and. Um, look, across all phases of, of what we do, legislatively, relationship-wise, we got to be friends with everybody uh, six days out of seven of the week. Right. You'll have to coexist. Um, wine and Spirits as well. We're partnering with Wine and Spirits here in Arizona because I don't see Arizona distilling taking away from our business. Yeah, I don't see the yeah. wineries of Arizona taking away from us. We have a lot in common. It's a pretty good way to look at it, I would agree. I, I, I was going to have ask follow up with that, just one other question. Um, and, and you more personally, I, you yeah. know, as, as personal opinion as you can about this, because it really doesn't have much to do with the AZ right. Craft Brewers Guild, you know, based off your previous response. Uh, the high end just uh, laid off, you know, uh, yeah. several, like 300 and something people right. from their distribution. Yeah, it was close to 400. Yeah, like quite three. a few people, because they, 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 I think they described them as unnecessary. Right. Those are quality people. Why did that, um, I mean? Why are they? Why were they unnecessary in your opinion? What What did AB and Bev mean by that? Um, you know, I, I can't speak to their. I obviously uh, right. Yeah. Um, to, to an exact. They're, but. they're 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 an organization known to 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 cut the bottom line. Yeah. Um, and and I know that a lot of acquired breweries say, oh, nothing's going to change, and the quality won't change. Yeah. Um, they implied um, but, all the jobs that were lost were much in the distribution side of it, right? I believe. You know. Yeah. Right. They're just going to be who they are. They're just very, they're very good at, at doing a, a calculation on it. And, yeah. and, and um, you know, getting the most out of the labor force is, I mean, they, they can't, they've already cut their really good deals on, on grains and malts and, and distribution channels. And, and they've worked their distributors pretty hard. I mean, you know, to get, you know, they could, they could spend, you know, millions on, on getting that extra quarter percent or whatever they're doing. But like, you know, labor, beer's still labor intensive and, you know, they have a history of, of, I mean, lit, I mean, we know the independent craft breweries of, of America know that we're really bad with labor, but in a good way. Like we yeah. employ more people and we're not efficient. Right. Um, so, yeah. I mean, you're seeing you're seeing what corporations do. Corporations yeah. make decisions based on hundreds of years Absolutely. and share shareholders. So, it's a very, um, you know. That's what they do. That's what they do very well. Well, I mean, um, if, if you were in that position and those places got bought out and you didn't see that writing on the wall at some yeah. point coming, I mean, I don't know about this soon, but at well, least at some point in the near future, based yeah, off, I mean, based off the information that was provided with that press release, they didn't hire, they didn't fire anyone related to any individual brewery, right? right but anyone in support of the high end that they brought in to provide, right. basically doubling up positions that breweries already had for distribution, and I'm guessing that's why we saw those people right. go. Well, that's what I'm saying. That it's, it's, but, you didn't see. But, that, you know, you, uh, there's, there's, there's so so yeah. there's lots of stories to go with it. I mean, there was already a story right. that was released by somebody who was fired who said I was integral. You know, I was a, a huge part of that yeah. process. I know. I know. There's a lot of people going like, "Oh, we we told you so. We knew this could happen." Yeah. yeah. Right. This is this is a blip on the radar. For I was going to say. And, and and so really, real to me, the big story is people I know, people you know, people who were doing a good job, people who had uh, maybe not our personal. Um, um, theory on how this should work at heart. They're good people, man, and they, and, they, and they're hopefully they'll land in the right spot. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's the real story. It, totally. And it, 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 it's not um, anybody who was working for the AB and Bev high end that got fired. We wish nothing but the th- best this for. Isn't, but this right. isn't. But the, it's still interesting to see where they, you know, the decisions they make as they've come sure. from. But, but this wasn't. This wasn't the. Oh, you know, like landmark, like this is the fall of the. Yeah, no, this doesn't signal the end of the high end. Absolutely not. No, no. So they're always going to, they they have the ability to put on that high end program, spend a lot of money on it, and decide it didn't work out for them. Yeah. Um, That's something that a lot of us can't do. Right. Um, So that's just that's just where they are. Yeah. I mean, um, absolutely. So and and to me, it's it's the the high end and buying all these craft like you know craft beer places isn't about making you know being getting their foot in that market per se it's about raising the value on their normal brand right because if they can pull away from craft beer they're kind of double dipping in, in the way it works 
Yeah, there's all kinds of theories on why they want to do what they do. And, and, and you know, if you actually read the trades, um, you know, um, Felipe Spajan, who, who, by the way, if, if you're, if you're uh, you know, heavily invested in, in like following all this and, and like finding the bad guy or whatever, or finding the person that really makes a difference, you know, there was that video, right, with all of the responses. There was a video about some of the former owners of these entities and their opinion on it. It's all noise. Yeah. They don't, they don't really, I mean, um, they, they actually, you know, they locally decide what's going on with the brews and, and, and personnel and all that stuff. But like whatever their opinion is, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I you're I, talking I, about that official response they came out from the points, high end, six points from, from the, the high end. end. You're talking yeah. about that, right? right? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so the guy that follows, that was funny. the guy that I mean, follows that was the hilarious. CEO of that, division which is Felipe Sargent and, and like right. everyone else is kind of noise and I, I respect all of them and whatever um, if you want to just listen to that video and just count how many times they said at the end of the day yeah um, whatever yeah, yeah. I mean it, I'd respect them more if they um, said that they wanted to get a nice paycheck you know I mean just, they're not going to do that so <laughs> no. um, so the got to pay attention to is him and he he admitted that wasn't a mistake and I think he's on record with this high-end energy he's like hey we, we learn a lot of stuff and it was a mistake or whatever, whatever, whatever it was. Um, that's got to pay attention to, and and, yeah. and, and, and and you know, um, um, here's the thing though. He's paid to say it was a mistake, or he's paid yeah. to say it was. A mistake. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, um, so totally. Um, you, you know how? I mean, look at it like politics, right? Yeah. People will say things, and I don't know what to believe. Well, yeah. All, all I know, all I know is double um, speak. Like I said, uh, as it pertains to Arizona. Um, and that's what matters. There are personal relationships. Like I know when someone from that organization tells me something, I believe it. Yeah. Um, based on my personal relationship, yeah. um, you know, I, we obviously wish them personal success. Um, so far, we haven't seen some of the skullduggery that we've seen in other states. Um, How? When, when we do, we'll just have to address it. And and I guess you know, and in. in this might be a question that it's hard for you even to answer, but how are they doing? I mean, how is the high end doing from your perspective? I mean, I really don't know. I mean, I've saw, we've all seen they just did the layoff, but like you said, that's really not that big of a deal. I, for I them. don't know. I don't know. And, you know, and um, you know, the, the, we have to work with. They have. Here's the thing: we could we could cut off our nose to spider face. That organization, uh, Fort Peaks, has relationship with retailers and distributors that we also work with. Oh yeah, um, and um, you know, again, if, if they're they 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 are exactly who they were going to be, maybe accelerated um, because of funding and and all that stuff. But but um, we have a lot of work to do ourselves. We have a lot. To, there's a lot of opportunity for all of us. Oh yeah. Um, but like I said, if, if, if they're working within the the strictures of of, of the laws here and um so far as i can see they're not doing anything that's that that's uh that rises to the level of of great concern we're, we're, but we're gonna pay attention yeah. to that we, i does, mean does their being here provide any does it provide any uh leverage for uh the az craft brewers guild does it help the craft brewers guild in any way you know i mean they're still the technical experts safety experts they're getting a lot of great information and, and um right. you know individual members have to make their own decisions about how they're going to relate to, to that organization. Um, you know, um, as, as, as somebody who's re speaks for the board, um, you know, we could at great peril, um, go head to head and, 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 you know, yeah. we're, we're not going to, to the general public, we're not even going to make a difference in this argument. Um, we, it's not worth the battle at this time at this time yeah certainly well i think that's an interesting way to put it and i appreciate you know your you know putting your two cents on it you know yeah no and and, and um, it's a, certainly a subject that's beaten to death and it's just you know the horse is totally dead but still it's interesting to, to ask different people in well, different if, if you if you if you understand who we are as individual breweries and what we're doing and you support us that's how we win right if, Absolutely. if you're if you're here to ask us to spend resources to take them down um, um, I don't I don't think 
we're going to have much impact. Yeah, I think that's a waste of time. I think it's more important, like you said, to focus on yourselves. I mean, but the second the second that we see some of the things that we've seen in, in, oh, yeah. in You're here St. To Louis and, and um, but we'll see. I mean, yeah. um, like I said, uh, we have to maintain a relationship. I, I'd rather have a relationship and understand where they're coming from and not be surprised. Keep your enemies close. <laughs> that puts a nice little bow on it. Yeah, so, yeah. No, it sounds good, man. Uh, I, you know, we, we probably could talk all night about. We could keep going, but we've been going for two hours now, right. so we appreciate it. So I, I've said everything about that, and Paul hasn't said anything. So <laughs> yeah, if I Paul. get fired, Paul will have to. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, Based on what I said, <laughs> Paul. Yeah, that's why Paul is maybe I'm like, fired. So like, I'm just gonna sit back and watch this happen, <laughs> and then I'm gonna take his position. <laughs> so no, Paul. Thank you so much. Of course, uh, we'll be back. We're gonna keep doing this, and we're gonna talk to you some more. I mean, we uh, we really love the we'll get some, craft. We we'll some beers in him. We we'll get some beers yeah, in him. Exactly. This cleanse will be done. Yeah. No more tea. No. But you know, honestly, we we really appreciate both yeah. you guys letting us come in and, and spending this time with you. So, so if people want to find you information about you guys or follow you on social media, where should they go? Um, we have, the Gil has a Facebook. Um, it's ChooseAZBrews dot com for uh, our general web stuff and to subscribe to the membership um instagram um i think we have one yeah i don't you do you know <laughs> you yeah. I, I mean i do google does i mean um i i, I don't know i don't know how, i don't know how to find me in particular or paul in particular <laughs> um but you know arizona craft brewers guild will yeah. get you some places oh yeah they'll take you everywhere you need choose az brews will get you some places um Hoppy Craftsman will get you some places. Yes, How's that? absolutely. Hashtag Hoppy Craftsman. Boom. We're on Instagram at Hoppy Craftsman and same with Facebook. Uh, so, yeah. Website is uh, hoppycraftsmanpodcast.com. And Jeff, who are the fucking reddest people in the world? Fucking reddest people in the world. Cena Gomez, San Diego Beer Talk Radio Podcast, and newest contributor, what? Mark Mark Ballesteros. Thanks, Mark. Nice. That list is going to get too long to repeat one. So if you, Hopefully. if you guys want to become uh, a patron of the show, uh, it is patron.com slash Hoppy Craftsman. Yeah. And give early, give often. Yes. Thanks a lot, guys. It's a great show. Again, Paul, thank you. Thank you. you know, appreciate it. Thank you, uh, Rob. Much appreciated for all your opinions no and great information to here, today. So, yeah, we'll be doing this again. But until uh, next time, I'm Nate. I'm Chris. I'm Jeff. Thanks. All right, later, guys. <laughs>